and welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Tom. Howdy, everybody. And Adam. Hello. Hi. How are you guys doing this week? This week was eventful, but good overall. Eventful in a good way or in a bad way? No, a bad way. (laughs) Oh. Oh. So um, I was cleaning my shower and the water was pooling at the bottom of the the shower tub thing. And I was like, oh, it's not draining. That's not good. So I like tried to tried to like plunge it and you know, nothing. And then I noticed my sink was also not draining my bathroom sink. And I was like, oh, that's not good. And then I flushed the toilet and that didn't flush properly. And then I tried the kitchen sink and water started coming up out of the, the shower drain, nasty water with chunks of, I don't want to know what it is in it. (laughs) So, (laughs) Oh man. So I try to call my landlord Oh God! and the number I have for my landlord is a home phone. I haven't had to contact him in forever because I haven't had any issues or anything. I just, you know, mail in my rent and everything's good. And I get the do, 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 this number has been disconnected. And I'm like, oh God, I don't know what to do here. So I like went to his house. There's nobody there. Uh, Turns out he's, uh, he doesn't live there anymore. He's he's a real old guy. He's, uh, I guess he's got dementia. So he's living elsewhere. So um, I left a note in the mailbox and his son actually contacted me. He's the one that kind of takes care of his properties now. So he came over, we got that fixed, but man, that sucked. (laughs) That was a, that was an ordeal. Terrible. Yeah. Well, because especially if his son doesn't get a hold of you, that turns into a, well, fuck. Yeah. Do I front this right now? I mean, <laughs> right, I have to front yeah. this right now, but am I going to yeah. make back? Because this isn't what the renters are supposed to have to do. Yeah. I'm like thinking of worst case scenarios. And then like the next day, the dude just called me like, hey, I got your note in the thing. And I was like, yeah, my plumbing's all backed up. And he's like, oh, okay. I'll be out there this afternoon. And it wasn't. Let's see. He called me. I was on my way home from work. Uh, it took me about 45 minutes to get home. He called me on my way home from work, said that he could be over that afternoon. Uh, I stopped by the grocery store, got home, and then like 20 minutes later, he was there, ready to go. Nice. Like, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so but, it yeah, sounds like you had it. Yeah. Brains? So other than that, though, um, I got the good news. I got a new router. So yeah, hang on, let's, networking. Uh, I have the old router handy right here. This is the router I've been using to stream and play games since we started this channel. Um, you might, and, rec- um, you might recognize one of these router? bad boys. Yeah. So, so, so how old is that guy? This is a, oh my God. This is, is a vintage a... 2007 Linksys wireless G router. That is that is the oh WRT 54G, yes. probably the it most is. famous router of all time. <laughs> that served me well for like five or six years. Yeah, they were a this, fucking workhorse. It yeah. was before Links. This was great. Was split. Mm-hmm. That was merge. actually my dad's merge. router when I still lived with my dad, and I haven't lived with my parents in quite some time. And you know, I still used it. <laughs> But I got a new one, and um, it made a bigger difference than I thought it would. Everything worked fine with this router, except for Fortnite Battle Royale. Uh, we kind of did a lot of troubleshooting, and that was the problem. So, got the new router, and now I can stream at like a thousand more bitrate. Just, it's fine now. No rubber banding, no weird ping nice. in Rocket League or anything. So That was fantastic. Yeah. So that's pretty much been my week other than games. What about you guys? Yeah, Tom, what have you been getting into? Um, not a whole lot, honestly. Um, so I played some games. Uh, I worked. I went out and did stuff, and I got good beer. Um, and that's really about it. My week has been pretty boring, which is really nice. Boring isn't always bad. If you're busy no, all the no, time, I, sometimes I'm boring very, is wonderful. I'm very thankful this week was boring. What, so what did you do this weekend? Nothing. I did nothing at all. It was 
amazing. <laughs> Something yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did. I, I did go out last night uh, to a bar that is full of pinball machines. <laughs> and yes, we did play the Adams Family Pinball Table, which nice. is one of the most famous and well-designed pinball tables of all time. So we did some of that. We played some Joust. I forgot how much I suck at Joust. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a good time. What bar did you go to? I honestly cannot remember the name. Was there it up were, by you, or was it down the one down in Renton? Uh, no, it was uh, it was in Seattle. It was downtown. Oh, okay. Because oh. I say yeah. there's only two barcades that I know of. One's downtown. One's in Renton. This wasn't a barcade per se. I, that wasn't. It was more of a pinball arcade. To be to be fair, they mm -hmm. had some uh, old school arcade machines there, but it was mostly pinball tables. All right. Nice. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a good time. Did you guys play yeah, much of here, the... Um, you had a lot of drinking involved in <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I, I did make it home. Um, but yeah, that, that was an adventure. And uh, I, I realized that reliving my college glory days of bar hopping, uh, <laughs> old Tom might be getting a little too old for that. <laughs> it was good, yeah. though. I, I made it home, and I don't, I don't think I made any really terrible decisions other than... Uh, there at at this one mystery bar that we went to, there were three dollar mystery shots and <laughs> mystery course, shots. That sounds like a Tom, wonderful time. Yeah, inebriated Tom thought it was a great idea to have cheap mystery shots and buy a round for everybody, uh, and that that basically ended my night. <laughs> like an hour later, I was like, "Oh shit! Last bus leaves in about twenty minutes. Uh, I've got to go home." And uh, <laughs> yeah, mystery shots it were just awful they were terrible never ever ever drink mystery shots i don't even like drinking shots of stuff i know what it is yeah it I'm, was, a it was bad. I, I'm not a shooter i can't even like like describe what it was i did have <laughs> though uh i had a woodford reserve neat which was just fantastic oh yeah glorious whiskey i love woodford woodford reserve so good it's so good um and then i had like, we went to this place and got a bunch of tiny plates of food, which was good. There's, like, some Asian-inspired chicken. There were short ribs, which were amazing. Oh, mm. my God. They were amazing. Like, literally, I picked up the rib, and the meat just, like, slid off on the <laughs> plate. I was like, holy shit. It was delicious. <laughs> yeah, that's about it for me. <laughs> Do you like that know. awkward pause You're, where nothing yeah, got handed I, that's off? That's because I was yeah. just, I, well, I personally was just picturing a delicious short rib <laughs> getting lost in the, <laughs> in the fantasy there. In, in the, <laughs> ma the majesty and magical yes. nature of short ribs where the meat just slides off the bone in glorious, juicy amazement. Yes. Now I'm hungry. Uh, honestly, I just ate I and this, I'm hungry. I know this is blasphemy, but ribs is probably i mean they're great and all but they're probably one of my least favorite forms of having meat mm, really yeah i mean i prefer to honestly i prefer chicken over pork anyway and i prefer beef over pork so i mean it, just by nature typically when it comes to actual pork rib and stuff mm -hmm. but also I, I like being able to just get a big chunk of meat not have to worry about bones and stuff Eric loves in general big chunks of meat Big chunks of meat. <laughs> I, I think I think there's a time and a place for both. Like if, yeah. if I have the choice between a good steak and good ribs, most often I'll pick the good steak. But if I need barbecue, uh, ribs have just got to be there. Yeah, like brisket. I am, oh, I am oh, not brisket over ribs. Over ribs. I, I will go. I will go ribs over brisket any day. I'll tell you no. what. I, I appreciate a good brisket, but ribs ribs are just yeah. That's that's the it's a must have. It's something like it just goes with barbecue, like tearing meat off of a bone. It just goes with it. You guys need you to fly. Separate. You guys need to fly out here in the summer for Ribs Fest. Oh, that would be good. I My only it. I issue with Ribs time. Fest is it's damn hot. It's always fucking hot. Yeah, that's true. My only problem with Ribs Fest is we won't have a place to stay this time. Well, you, oh, that's you can true. cram in my there's little no house. One, there's no one left in Columbus. Yeah. We'll drive all back. of the people from Columbus have left. We'll drive back and we'll all stay here in my less than 500 square foot house. 
<laughs> yeah, we could do that. That'll work. I guess Everybody, what we could always do. There's enough floor space for us all to sleep if we organize ourselves properly. We could do a hotel room like that, you know, yeah. just all bundle into one hotel room. <laughs> Go to the barcade and then just <laughs> waddle back drunk as shit to a hotel. Yeah. That could work. There's a holiday waddle, in around waddle there. Waddle back. Oh, well, like hold that. on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> a holiday in? No, look. I, I think I'm I'm a pretty cheap person by nature, but like I won't put myself Inn. in like bodily danger, right? Like just mortal terror of sleeping at a Holiday Inn. Are I'm you actually, being elitist right now? What yeah, is wrong I, with I, Holiday I, Inn? I am. Everything is wrong with Holiday Inn. So oh, it's, it's what, only on. West Inn for Tom. <laughs> yeah, I've, actually, yeah, only what's, the best. or Embassy Holiday Suites. Holiday Inn seems like the. It's fine. It's not like a. At least it's not like a Motel Six or. Uh, yeah, so one of those like, uh, good, very shady like, places. Yeah, Wait, holiday, holiday inns are nice. They're clean. They're yeah. not like two hundred dollars a night. Yeah. When when my like family them. traveled anywhere, we referred to the Holiday Inn as roughing it. That was our version <laughs> of camping in the woods. Oh, in a you tent were was yeah. staying at a Holiday Inn. Well, you oh, see, that's, that's I, harsh, I often man. camp in the woods <laughs> yeah. in a tent. So. I'm fine with Holiday Inns. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not sure if you can tell on stream right now. I forgot to take this fucking off. I saw my camo fleece shit on. We can't even see you. Oh. You're not even on stream. It's just a floating <laughs> head. I just, I just see leaves. Yeah, I, I got out of the shower. I'm like, dude, I just want to be fucking comfy. What's the most comfy shit I have? Like, there's camo nothing jacket. below this. You see this. There is nothing below this. So, as long as I don't get up. Keep that camera like, wow. up, please. Do not yeah, let that camera yeah, just, fall down. Yeah, could you raise it a little bit? Because that, that would be great. <laughs> just in case. Uh, no, no, I joke. Um, but yeah, I, Tom being all elitist on his hotel <laughs> bullshit. Really? Holiday Inn? Come on. Though it's I will fine. say, the hey, last hey, time I, uh, are awesome. I traveled for uh, work... And they put me up in a Weston. Oh my God. Nice. I can tell you this much. If oh, I'm yeah. not paying for it, I'm doing that here on out. <laughs> Hands down if I'm not paying for it. That was nice. Well, yeah. If you're not paying so for it, you go to I, the best place you can find. I had to go to a, uh, a security conference. Um, and it was literally 12 hours before the conference started. Or yeah, probably probably 30 hours before the conference started. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, hey, this not get approved because I have to leave like tonight. And uh, they said, oh, shit. Yeah, it's approved. But this is a really popular conference. There's a lot of people there. Um, DerbyCon, uh, it's a security hacker convention. Um, and every hotel room except one was sold out in Louisville, Kentucky. So I picked that one room, which was like a top floor embassy suites mini apartment because it was the only thing left and the company was like holy shit it's how much a night and i said look you waited until the last minute to approve this shit i don't feel bad at all um it was such a high-end hotel room that you know they give you like the snack tray and there's prices listed there uh this room didn't have any prices they just said yes this is yours it comes with your mini apartment in louisville kentucky and we will refill it every day. Also, here's a sheet to mark down anything extra you would like, Mr. Webster. Here are your gold-plated key cards. It was <laughs> ridiculous. Tom, you're not helping your narrative. I know. I know. <laughs> but it was, it was great. And I would never have paid for it on my own. So the year before, I did front the hotel on my own and then got reimbursed later. And I mm -hmm. think I stayed at a Motel 6 uh, that literally had spots in the wood floor where it was like dented and you could see the concrete underneath so you'd gladly check That's into a motel six, six but you yeah. no holiday inn no no way well it's it's different for <laughs> conferences right if i'm actually going to be at the hotel room and mm -hmm. not just you know crashing between drunken raves mm -hmm. uh then yeah i will i will go cheap because all i need is a between bed drunken raves okay i think i got a <laughs> that's, good... that's derby con uh holiday inn is essentially an applebee's yeah, it's not great yeah. by any means, but, but you can there. go there and find something that's not going to be terrible. Yeah, I I stayed at the Burger King of uh, of hotels <laughs> when I went a couple years ago. You went to the fucking rallies or like White Castle. <laughs> no, rallies is okay. <laughs> Burger King actually doesn't taste very good. I like I Burger King. Bur Every time I've had it, it's I hate been Burger King. Really bad. Especially the last time, better than Burger King burgers is Hardee's for fast food. 
the the last time I went to Burger King, I literally got a moldy sandwich. So wow, yeah, I that's think I'm gonna pass. Impressive. For the record, that has that's, nothing yeah, to do with not the, the chain and everything to do with the location. <laughs> um, I'm just saying. It's Burger King, man. There's so there's a reason that's why like Robert someone Trump, getting a package that doesn't come on time from Amazon and saying, "Well, that's Amazon." Right? <laughs> Amazon oh, fuck sucks. Them. Even though wow. it came from a third party. How do they seller. even stay in business? Okay. So, um, Robert Downey Jr. used to be like this huge drug fiend, and he got sober. And the how it happened is he came out of his super high just cloud, and he came to at a Burger King eating a Whopper. And he said, oh, my God, what am I doing to myself? I'm at a Burger King. And that's when he decided to stop doing drugs and clean up his life. That says something Dude. about how much of an elitist ass he is than a Burger <laughs> King. <laughs> I'm sensing I, I, a theme think, with you. We really need to get you away from these people. But, but it's Burger King, man. I, I can't do it. Can't do it. That's fair. Rah. So speaking of Robert Downey Jr., who starred in the popular series of movies Iron Man, who, which was made as a video game for the Sega Genesis a long time ago, which is a video game system. Have you guys played any video games this week? Oh, shit. How about that you, was Tom? A, <laughs> that was a wonderful transition. I'm, I'm in awe. No, did here. you guys ever play the Iron Man game for uh, on Sega Genesis? I did not. I, I played the Spider-Man game, which was okay. pretty good. It's uh, I, uh, I was an Iron Man fan when I was a kid. Oh, uh, okay. Which one am I? Th was it Genesis? Maybe I'm thinking of something else. No, I'm thinking of uh, uh, probably. I think there is one on Genesis, but the game I'm thinking of, I think, was actually on the first PlayStation. Okay. Marvel vs. Capcom. No, it was like a, <laughs> it was a platformer. Iron Man X O Man of War in heavy metal. Hmm. Not familiar. It's kind of like Not uh, familiar at all. Know, it's just like a shooter platform, like Ve like Vector Man was. Just like a ah, it was probably actually Vector a Man. really bad game, but I liked it when I was a kid. I really liked Vector Man. <laughs> Vector Man is great. Vector Man was good. It, it's I, not only it looked great for the time. Oh, yeah, it was oh, yeah. so yeah. beautiful. I've got Vector Man on Steam. Today. I say I haven't actually looked at it in over a decade, so I have no clue if it's aged well or not. There's that um. <laughs> What is it? Sega Classics thing on Steam? Yeah, I think I have Mega Man and uh, Doctor Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Oh God! Yeah, gotta love Mean Bean Machine. <laughs> I like that they just took Puyo Puyo and put a Sonic skin over it just to sell it to America. Well, because you know how much shit's been done like that. The whole Tetris yeah. genres had that like done and done again to it. But anyway, Tom, what you been playing this week? Um, so we should probably talk about Trove, because it was last week's post-cast community game. Yeah. Um, I'll be totally honest. I went into this uh, not expecting much. I went into this yeah. expecting to not like it. It's an MMO. Yep. It's voxely in the graphics. It looks like, oh, uh, what if Minecraft was an MMO? Yeah. Her, der, der, let's put yeah. out a game. When I looked at the, um, the Steam page, I was like, oh, man, this is... This well, probably my fear good, was... But... My fear, it's an MMO. MMOs take hours to get to the point where you can start doing shit. Yeah. Not this You're one. cutting down <laughs> trees and killing sheep for the first 10 hours of the game. Yeah, not this one. Yeah, this was nuts. But Yeah, um, so it was super fast. Super mm -hmm. fast to get in. Like, we joined the game. You can click on a friend on your friends list and hit, uh, you know, join on them. Mm -hmm. And it will literally, it won't teleport you to, like, the zone they're in. It will teleport you onto the fucking person, yeah. which was great. Because Josh would be like, oh, guys, I found a boss. There's these enemies. I need help. And we would all join on Josh. Yeah. And it's like, it takes a couple seconds to, you know, teleport to them. But mm -hmm. it was almost instant. And that we was were a great in there. Mechanic. We were fighting and wrecking shit. It was yeah. so much fun. That's a it great mechanic really because it, it's it's easy when playing in a group in a game like that. Somebody like strays off the path and goes like way far off in the distance, and yeah, then you just join on them. Everybody's yeah. there at the same time, then, no problem. For an MMO, I will say I got very lost very quick, mm -hmm. more so than I think I ever have in an MMO. Typically, in an MMO, if yeah. I venture away, I'm able to find my way back. Mm -hmm. 
on this one, especially since like the fog was so like it kicked in so quick to yeah. limit your visibility. Yeah. It was just like, oh fuck, I ventured away and where the hell did you guys go? Yeah. Yeah. So that I, join mechanic saved me. The the building stuff was interesting, uh, but it, it it might get better at the higher levels, but mm -hmm. at the the stages we were playing it didn't seem like we really needed to build or deconstruct anything. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff we got into had a little bit of deconstruction, but not a whole lot. Um, I was playing I later with um, Tim Timotheus and um, Josh, and there's definitely some benefits of building. Like you can claim plots. As soon as you claim it, your house appears there. So you can build your house here, go to another plot, claim it there, and your house transports there with all the shit inside of it. So you have oh, a mobile nice. house with you that you build. That'll have your portals hmm. to different levels, your different decomposers to make your blocks and weapon mm -hmm. upgrades and stuff. So it definitely does have a reason for it. Yeah. I, I like that. It looks like there's a, a decent amount of depth to this game uh, as far as upgrade paths and character customization and just exploring the world. But to have fun with it, you don't need to know anything except Wacid and clicking the mouse. Yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know to have a good time. Uh, it was super easy to get into. I had a great time with Trove. Yeah. Okay, so you ready for me to rain on the parade of it? All right. Uh, Do for it. an MMO, I found it very unrewarding. unrewarding. It didn't have the MMO okay. hook because there was no reward system to it. You were throwing away loot quicker than you picked it up. There was no real leveling system that made you feel, yes, you had one big overall level and that was it. I think it's probably There's more of which world you can get to and... Because all that's based on level. Like certain worlds you can't get to to yes. your X power level. And then certain equipment you pick up you can't use until your X level. So that I but think there was that, no satisfaction to it. But that was the big thing for me. There was no satisfaction to what I was doing. I was doing and enjoying it because I was with the people. Mm -hmm. But by myself, I don't think I would have found that game enjoyable. Right. Whereas yeah, I don't, the, the I don't see myself going big M Yeah, the, to me, an MMO hook gets you regardless of with, whether or not you're with people. Yeah. And that just true. didn't yeah. get up one. I don't see myself going back to Trove. Um there's it seems like there's a lot to this game. Mm -hmm. Um I, I will I will agree with you though. It's really easy to get lost. Yeah. Um and I think mostly that's because of the aesthetic. Yes, voxels are easy to, you know, build graphically, especially for an inexperienced team. Right. The downside is that you have to work really, 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 really hard to keep things from looking samey. And every yeah. world we went to, it was literally the same shit with a different color palette. Um, yes, that's true. Uh, that that comes with the voxel territory. I totally get it's a it's a limitation of the art style, and you can make beautiful works out of voxel engines. Mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't do that for this one. There was no differentiation in the worlds uh, except for a color palette and a couple new blocks. Yeah, that's fair. But um, I. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that if I'll, I'll ever go back to it or not. Um, but it seems to be one of those games uh, that you can get into it as much as you want. You know, some games you have to really go all the way in. You know, The Witcher series, uh, probably most other MMOs. This one you could either... We played for one day. We had fun immediately. And... Uh, our friend Timotheus has been playing it a lot and he's gotten really deep into it and that you have that option. There's enough content. There's enough late game stuff. So it seems really cool that they've made a game that you can, you know, put in whatever you want out of, you can get whatever you want out of it is what I'm saying. And it's fun. Well, to the point yeah. where there was no guidance in this game. It's yeah. just fucking Pretty go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Without, without Tim there, uh, we would have not have had as much fun. Um, because he, he was able to say, hey, here's where yeah. you go to he fight people, started. here's where you deconstruct the loot. Like, mm -hmm. without without an onboarding guide, um, I could see someone having a bad time with this game or a much slower time to get in and have fun. Uh, so so thank you, Timotheus, for leading us through. Yeah. It was a great time. I did enjoy Trove. And and we should mention the price, right? Yeah, uh, so uh, zero dollars. <laughs> yeah, I personally paid nothing to play this game, yeah. but I got on and had fun. And a totally free, quick to get into MMO is so rare. Yes, oh, Guild yeah. Wars 2 is free. Yes, Star Trek Online is free. But the ramp up to actually be able to play those games with people and have a lot of fun uh, is it takes a while. 
it takes a long while. It does have the slow MMO burn to introduce all the mechanics and get you into the systems. But mm -hmm. uh, Trove didn't have any of that. And that's, I think that's more good than bad, but there is some bad to it as well. Yeah. I do like, I like, yeah. the, I like the building aspect of it, though. That was kind of cool. I, um, well, you and uh, yeah. Dr. Fuzzy Gloves <laughs> were building a yeah, mile you, high. Yeah. You, you guys, uh, th they were all going after dungeons and stuff. And then I'm like, well, hey, I figured out how to build stuff. Cool. Oh, I wonder how tall the map is. So we built a tower from the ground. We kept going up, 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 up some more until it felt like forever. And then the sky changed. And it looked like... Um, it almost looked like you're almost up into the space. The world. It was really, yeah. But uh, we started building like a big platform up there. And there was one aspect of the building I thought was cool. Uh, different than Minecraft. Uh, there's a lot of parallels to Minecraft as far as the building goes. But if you click a square, it'll show you like where, where the square you can build is, which you can build pretty far away from your player character. You don't have to be standing right on top of the block you need to build. And you can click and drag to build a whole row line at once, immediately. I thought that was cool. It made it really easy to, oh, to fill out like long platforms and stuff. That's something that's really I really nice. wish Terraria had. Yeah. I mean, because it's just so short range, having that longer range and just click and drag is really mm -hmm. nice. I miss that game, Terraria. We haven't played that in so long. I'll have to boot it back up. Um, me and Epoch had a uh, world going there for a little bit. I've had the server down though recently so i have to mm. get that spun back up but before we say anything else i do want to call out tonight's postcast game is going to be battle right another free-to-play game action-packed kind of moba-ish but really it's just a f arena brawler from what i was kind of getting mm -hmm. so everyone just get it it's quick to download free try it out with us yeah because we're all noobs <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting later tonight. Uh, other than Trove, I've been playing some Dota Two. Uh, it's fun. I like Dota. They keep polishing the interface and making things just a little better. Um, there are certain things like re certain uh, recipes to build items have changed, and because I haven't played in a while, uh, it's tripping me up. It's like wait. I used to only need these things. Now I need this thing as well. Oh, this is fucking bullshit. Um, but so, if you've yeah. noticed it, though, those decompositions are really nice. Like for a Desolator now, well, I shouldn't say now. It's been like that since two or three updates ago. But there's an item for armor reduction. And yes, yeah, the like Blightstone. Tranquils, there's an item for speed boost. So you can actually get some of the perks of the items before you get the item now, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, it, before, is, it is nice. It makes more sense. Uh, I don't know if I like it. It's just different. So, yeah. Yeah, it's... it's. Uh, I, I don't like it yet because I'm not used to it. However, I do like the decomposition to actually be able to buy the bonuses. To where Deso, I really want it for the armor. I don't really care about the damage. So if I can go ahead and buy the armor thing for 350 up front... I'll I'll wait on getting the rest of the deso. Give me that armor reduction. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I have bought the the core components on characters and not built them into, um, you know, the item you would end up with at the end of a full build, just, you know, to to counter someone. So that's nice. Uh, I like Dota. Um, their onboarding is still trash. Uh, their training doesn't go anywhere beyond, hey, you can right-click to move, and these are towers, and this is the ancient. Um, uh, I yeah, really... but, okay, if you go all the way through it, though, what they used to do, I don't know if they still do the tutorial, there was a limited hero pool, 10 matches that they wanted you to play. Yeah. And that's where you really learned. They taught you how to shop, they taught you how to kill. Now go play 10 matches against noobs as well. And you all just yeah. run amok and all this, suck together issue, until you learn. The issue is that it's not noobs. Uh, the limited hero mode, so I, I used to play that. Um, the limited hero uh, mode is just filled with smurfs. Just people, just absolute pros at this game, going in there just to feel good about themselves because they can wreck people who have never played before. Um, it, it sucks. It really sucks. There needs to be an actual, honest-to-God, AI-filled tutorial. And bot matches just don't cut it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can play a lot of them and kind of get it, but... 
it's it's more of a teach yourself and watch a bunch of YouTube videos like it's always been, and that's a shitty experience for gotta, a, a new player. Gotta do your research. Yeah, but to be honest, all games are like that I should, to a degree. Are there's they? not there's not many games that show you how to work the meta of a game. Um, there there is uh for in some small ways. Um, so. In Overwatch, when you get killed by a certain character, it'll pop up a tooltip and say, Hey, uh, this person does this thing, and that's how they killed you. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to look at this character or this ability to try to guard against that. And I was like, oh, that's really nice. That's cool onboarding. Um, and it, it, it just recently started popping that up for me, so I don't know if it's a, Wow, Tom, you suck, you need some tooltips, or if it's a recent update. Um... So but you just want I, something to tell you the rock, paper, scissors of the system. Yeah, it would be nice. Like, if you got killed by Axe, it might say, hey, Axe has a lot of health, um, and he's strong against physical damage. You might want some, you know, pure damage or some magic damage. Here are some characters uh, or items to help you combat him. Um, you know, something, something just small. They have to be careful. If they tell you what items to build to counter axe, all of a sudden they want you to get a, or a, pit, a sheep stick and you have five people running around with sheep sticks and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it probably we could pin most of Dota's training woes on the fact that Dota is really fucking complex. Yeah. Um, Which is why I don't think you can really have a tutorial to actually cover the in-depth of it. I think I just think, playing... I think you could, but the tutorial would literally make up a 40-hour campaign. So do you remember <laughs> back in the early days of us playing Dota when you had to go through the tutorials? How yeah, all yeah. we did was bitch about them because people couldn't play with us? Oh, yeah. Oh, trying I'm trying to saying, avoid that. Yeah, I'm not saying force the tutorials. Don't ever force the tutorial, right? Um, but what I am saying is that having a campaign mode of bot matches where they teach you certain things to uh, get you into certain units. Like, look at most RTS games where they'll start you out with, like, like two different units and then they'll say, oh, look, here's a rover or, or here's, uh, you know, a car or here's some tanks. And, that, like, over the course of missions, they will slowly, you know, add in one or two more ingredients just to get you used to them on the buildup. Mm -hmm. If Dota had a mode like that where it took one or two mechanics with some custom maps and just added one or two new things so you could get used to it until at the end of your campaign you were playing full matches against bots um that would go a long way to help people get into the game and and train on it um, and then at the end of 2020 you would complete that tutorial <laughs> yeah i mean maybe, maybe maybe right but it's it it's end. optional it's fully <laughs> optional if you said hey i don't need to know what tanks do or or what uh what these other zerg guys do i don't give a shit i'm just going to play multiplayer you can do that right dota should give you that option um but having it there for people who really want uh, a bit more hand holding through the tutorial and learning the mechanics it should be there it definitely yeah. needs more for a game that complex yeah, and it, when yeah. when you compare this to something like uh, Heroes of the Storm, which is Baby's first MOBA, and I don't, I actually don't like that game. I think it's a it's a bad game. Um, I think it's a poor MOBA. Uh, their their tutorial, even though the list of mechanics compared to Dota is like this big, right? It's it's such a small subset of things you have to learn. Mm -hmm. um, they do a decent job of adding you know one or two more things per round and again these these are the people that design starcraft 2 campaigns to teach you how to effectively play multiplayer they did that same thing with heroes of the storm and it works really well for that game you got up and running and knew how to play the game after uh going through their single player just a bit um you know they didn't teach you everything it wasn't 100 percent, but it was enough that you felt effective in multiplayer games hmm. that's good yeah, and you got me wanting to play some RTSs now. Right? StarCraft 2 is free. We've got a friend that's super into it. StarCraft 2 is free. We've got a friend that can uh, teach us how to get good. Yeah. But anyway, um, other than that, what else have you been up to? Uh, I've been playing some Overwatch because uh, Overwatch rules. I'm getting more people into it. It is currently uh, the free weekend on Overwatch. Yes. So if you if you want to play... Go install it. It is free right now. Uh, I think it's free until like Sunday night, Monday morning, something like that. Something like uh, that. Yeah. So get in, download it, play it with us. Um, Dadam and I played some rounds today. Yeah. And it was just a good time. So 
I've actually really enjoyed our games earlier, uh, more so than the last free weekend, uh, probably because I'm a little more familiar with it. But I'm actually considering maybe picking it up. I really had a good time it is today on with sale. That. It's uh, 30 bucks right now, I want to say. 30 is not hateful. It's not. It's really not. That's not the one I'm wanting to explore this weekend. I'm wanting to explore Rainbow Six. Yeah. This weekend. Yeah, we should, there is we should that do too. that too. I've We've always been a huge day. Rainbow Six fan. This one though was just so close quarters when it first came out. Yeah. And I haven't tried it since. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's it's not even in the same formula of the old Rainbow Six games. It's a whole other thing with the Rainbow Six name on it, maybe, but. The mechanics feel very similar. It's just it's the game mode was substantially different. Mm -hmm. Like you have a invaders coming in to crash on a building. You set it up. You set up different things to make their siege harder. Mm -hmm. They control RC cars at the beginning of the round to try to scope out what you're doing. <laughs> it's really, really cool mechanic. Very tactical. Oh, I'm, that's why I'm I love willing... those games. I'm willing to try it out, but I have always hated tactical shooters. I've tried to like them. I really have, uh, yeah, but I'm just sure. trash. I'm utter well, trash at tactics. To yeah. me, this is what so, or, um, Counter-Strike tries to be, just not good. Uh, you could argue that Overwatch is kind of a tactical shooter. <laughs> it's uh, To me, it's, a, it's In the same FPS vein that all shooters are in some way MOBA. tactical. <laughs> it's like a MOBA-ish shooter yeah that's why i was really, like i was never you take you take like the heroes of dota and mm. it's it's not really comparable to tf2 yeah that's true. um but you take the the heroes of dota and you throw them into a first person shooter uh and i think you get overwatch with the gameplay of tf2 yeah which is I weird just... because i don't like any of those games but i really enjoyed overwatch yeah. today <laughs> pretty much it's coming was... down to the point that's sickening to me that everything that has a hero and an uh ability if yeah. a person has an ability and it's considered a class it's now a moba yeah. by definition yeah, yeah MOBA, all that. moba has always been like really kind of a fuzzy term right before yeah. moba meant dota and league but now you've got battle rights which is a third person action game that happens to have a lot of moba stuff thrown into it but doesn't kind control of? anything like the traditional MOBAs, and there's no shop, yeah. and there's no I, creep, I think, and there's no towers, and there's no If you don't have lanes, lanes and creeps, I don't think it should be considered <laughs> It's just a, a room you guys all go in and fight each other with heroes. That's, you just have fucking classes with abilities. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, from I, what I understand, it's actual, you know, WASAD mu movement, uh, mouse aiming, real-time combat. It's not just click on enemy usability. I think, and this this gets into a bigger conversation that we probably shouldn't like dive into. But the fact that um, I I would not classify Overwatch as a MOBA; it is a first person shooter. The same way I wouldn't classify Portal as a first person shooter; it's a puzzle game. Um, even though you know both Overwatch and Portal share a lot of similarities with each other, they are fundamentally extremely different games, right? <laughs> um, even though Dota and Overwatch yeah. uh, share a bunch of stuff in common, they are fundamentally different genres. Uh, and what makes a genre, what what goes into building and saying this game is this thing and this game is this other thing. Mm -hmm. Why is Mario Odyssey a platformer predominantly uh, where it's not an adventure game? Like, there's there's so yeah. many nuanced arguments you can have for the whole thing. Yeah, people do this with music genres too, and it gets crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Genres like, the, suck. The uh, only thing we have useful, to though. we have to know is that Overwatch is fun. People hate Dota, and I like it. Um, and uh, I've been playing Super Mario Odyssey this week, and oh my god, it is one of the best Mario games I've ever played. Like you've got Mario sixty four, Mario Galaxy. I'm throwing Galaxy two in there as well, and then Mario Odyssey. Like this is a return to form. It is the best three D platformer I've ever played. Um, I just got past uh, the... This is in the Hold trailer, on. so... Can yes. I call you on something real quick? 
Yes. It's the best 3D platformer you've ever played, but you put it fourth on the list of 3D platforming Mario. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just saying it goes into <laughs> that list. Like, to me, okay, I was going to say, I'm like, so there's some issues here with your numbering yeah. seat. No, no, no. It goes into the collection of the best platforming games of all time. Mario Odyssey sits comfortably next to Galaxy, Galaxy 2, and Mario 64. Uh, totally sharing the same shelf. Um, this was in the trailer. It's not a spoiler. There's a musical number in New Dog City. It's like the second big mission that you do. Mm -hmm. um, it will go down as one of my favorite moments in all of gaming, hands down. Uh, it's it's peppy. It's bright. It's cheerful. It's ridiculous and fun and nostalgic. It just oh my god! It just it drips with this Nintendo polish um, <laughs> that only Nintendo can pull off, right? Like, mm -hmm. you've you've got Blizzard polish, right? Which is, like, some of the best you've ever seen, but then Nintendo just comes and just wrecks them, right? <laughs> um, it's, it's great. Uh, I'm playing more and more and more Mario, and it just keeps getting better. Uh, I really, really like this game, and I haven't even finished it. Yeah, I've, I've quote-unquote, I've got the credits. I've rolled the credits. I've hit... The next thing after the credits, I haven't beat that yet because it gets fucking insanely difficult. To get credits in Mario does not take time. It does not take effort. It is easy. It is quick. Within eight hours, you can roll the credits. The shit after that gets insane. <laughs> They'll tell you what mark of moons you need. And when you hit that and you go do that, you realize, oh my God, here's where the hard stuff starts. I've still yet to do it. It's it's a fucking grind. <laughs> I won't say anything after that, but it is a fucking grind. One of the things that really made me happy about this musical number in New Donk City uh, is you can actually go up to a person and say, hey, can we do that again? And I've played through it three times because it's just so much fun. <laughs> it's not, so it's not difficult. It's not a challenge. It's just a good time. So nice. did you catch on to some of the... Um, Easter eggs they threw in there for that. Like one of them, there's a guy that you go up to and say something and it's during the music and stuff. And he's like, Hey, jump man, jump. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a reference to Mario was first known as jump man. Yeah. Yep. Oh my God. It was so good. It was so great. Uh, and they, they said, Hey, we're going through the history of our city and don't, don't go and watch a video. If you're going to play this game, just go out, buy it enjoy the hell out of it because it is a great time uh, even even leading up to that moment like i i first got the drummer right and he's just he's laying down some beats i'm like oh okay so what are they gonna do and then i get the like the guy with the horn or the the saxophone mm -hmm. and he starts belting out the mario theme i'm like oh <laughs> shit that's where this is going hot damn <laughs> and then you get everyone else and you've got like a mario symphony on stage it's fucking rad uh, the sound design in this game is some of the best I've heard since Breath of the Wild, really. The sound design was good, but when the drummer plays, it didn't match. It doesn't match the music. And that bothered no. me. No? Oh, yeah. shit. Also, but... you can, uh, it's something you can do is you can fuck with them while they're playing, which is kind of you funny. Can. Nice. <laughs> it's hilarious. I do. I think I might have seen part of that uh, magical moment on one of your guys' streams. At some point, it's uh, it's in the trailer too. Is they it? they threw this moment or, or a piece of this moment in the trailer, which I thought was um, I don't know how I feel about that. On one hand, it made me excited to see it. On the other hand, it would have been Takes way more effective. The, as a, yeah, yeah, it would I have didn't been a watch surprise. that trailer, so it didn't bother me. Yeah, okay. I try not to watch too many trailers, especially for movies. Oh yeah, movie trailers are the worst. Yeah, You'll bad. see everything. <laughs> Side and in note, comedies, you'll see the only funny parts. Yeah. <laughs> side, side note, though. Thor Ragnarok is fucking hilarious, and you guys should go see it. Oh. Yeah. Fair it's enough. it's fun. I haven't seen any I've Thor heard good things. Yeah, it's, it's a return to form. It's just, it's funny and light, and it's not, like, the heavy, dark shit that Thor was doing in 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, it's campy. just fun. Yeah, it's campy as all hell, but it's not, like... I don't I don't really think it's legit camp because they don't try to be good and fail making them camp. They just embrace it. They said, Yeah, there's a dude who throws lightning. Also, Hulk is there. He's a giant green guy. 
and we're just going to have a fucking good time because everything's ridiculous and we're going to embrace it. It is it is wonderful. I love movies like that. Everything's like, ridiculous would, and we're going to embrace it. That's that yeah. that should be a I, I movie genre. It, <laughs> it really should be. I would put this funnier than Ant-Man. And Ant-Man was hilarious. Oh, I didn't see that either. Probably I not about as that funny movie. as Deadpool. Deadpool was Speaking very... of, I haven't seen the trailer yet, but did you guys see the thumbnail for the trailer? Oh, trailer the for whole what? trailer is, is that. I haven't watched it yet, but the thumbnail of the trailer is Deadpool is Bob Ross. <laughs> yep. He does uh, the whole thing, and it's it's kind of funny. It's not like rolling on the floor funny, but uh, it's it's funny. I like I'm, I'm scenes excited. and events that aren't like, oh my god, that is hilarious, but over the entire scene, it's just enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it doesn't need to have this huge, oh my god, payoff. As long as it was enjoyable and slightly amusing the entire time, like, okay, I can get behind that. As long as yeah. they don't soil the majesty that is Bob it. Ross. Dude. What oh, a, it I, has been soiled. Ass. It is absolutely what soiled. A cool dude. My third year of college, every it was probably about every other day to be more realistic. But uh, Dobby and I would watch Bob Ross. <laughs> like we get some food, we would it's, pick it up on PBS on the local stations yeah. through antenna. And just watch Bob Ross. Yeah, he legitimately I just fucking painting. I can legitimately <laughs> just sit down and watch that that show it's it's great if i if i'm having trouble sleeping i will put on yeah. the joy of painting because yeah. he's so fucking soothing are they still on netflix like, there shit. was a bunch of them on netflix there for a I while i think so like brew some chamomile tea mm -hmm. put your feet up and put on some bob ross man you are out i i did that, that dude's for a just while chill yeah <laughs> and i, I know it's I've told just this amazing story. to watch how fast he transforms like just this palette of bullshit nothing into oh my god yeah yeah how the hell did he do that <laughs> um, so, uh, I know I've told this story on the stream before, but when Twitch was doing their Bob Ross marathon to launch the creative channels, um, whenever Bob Ross would make a happy little accident, everyone would reply in all caps ruined in Twitch chat. Um, <laughs> and then when he would turn it into like a tree or a rock or something, they would yell either like hacks or MVP or MLG <laughs> at him. Uh, and then at the end of every show, when he closed it out and showed the final painting, everyone mm -hmm. did GGWP. <laughs> it was funny. amazing. That's very... It was a fantastic mashup. Twitch chat can get pretty rough on very popular things, but sometimes it's just, it's funny. Yeah. It's like a high Most of the time I find mass communities to be obnoxious over the top mm -hmm. and like just extreme. Like Reddit is very bad about that. But yeah. sometimes communities can just be fucking awesome when you see the chat scrolling so fast and then you just catch a glimpse of something <laughs> that is just pure gold and then it's immediately gone and you're like did i just did yeah. i really see that and then you're like trying to go back and see it again and you can't because it's moving too fast that's yep. funny yeah uh, so you've been so, playing anything else tom no that is it for me what have you been playing i actually i see this like on your discord 24 hours a day seven days a week you are playing an idle game. Yep. I Absolutely. I talked about it last week. Um, idle Champions of Forgotten Realms. Uh, so it. I'm a big, like I said before, Salvatore guy. This is Sword Coast of the Forgotten Realms. So it's right there with anyone who's read the Drist sagas. Um, it's known territory. Actually, you play as Brunor, which is interesting. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun. Um it's a little different than your normal idol because there's actual missions. There's actual objectives. Um, when you get that, you can close out of the mission and then you get these um, talismans for how much gold you've earned. And those talismans will let you will multiply the gold you earn on the next run, or you can apply those for a damage increase on your people. So it's a strategic balance. And then you have a grid where you can position your heroes. Mm -hmm. And let's say you have two heroes beside each other. All of a sudden, you get a third hero. That third hero might eventually get an ability that says anyone in column in front of them now gets bonus damage. And someone else will say, hey, anyone in the same column with me gets bonus damage. And they have all these different strategies where you need to position your people. So it's, it's really, really interesting for an idle game. It's more engaging than what you normally get out of a clicker game. Okay. In fact, you don't click much. You click to stall the people, so your people kill them before they kill you. But you're not clicking for damage because 
the other people just do more. But yeah, it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's free. Um, I saw my buddy uh, Vosbeck playing it, so I picked it up. It's like, yeah, that's pretty fun. Nice. That seems um, actually books. really nice. Like a, a clicker game that you do things in. That's weird to me. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so obviously it's free. There is like, hey, you can buy these chests. Or you can just save up just the gems not, you get and yeah. get the chest. It's not an EA situation where you never get <laughs> we'll enough to buy the chest. That. We'll be getting into that. Later. Yes, we we will. That's basically the main so, topic for so tonight. There's but another. You, you, I'm looking at the show notes. Are, are, I'm sorry. Are you done talking about idle champions yet? Are you still got some points to make? I didn't mean to interrupt. I guess. I guess well, I'll, cu- I'll cut it. I'll cut it short. No big deal. No, it's not a big. Deal. I was just going to ask you about. No, nah, no, nah, there's game. really nothing more. It's just that you don't have to pay to get it. Okay. There is enough coming through that you can get these small chests constantly, but they warn you by doing the in-game currency, you do not get the chance to get these ultimate weapons. Mm-hmm. But you don't need them. Whatever. Yeah. So, so and as called out in chat, the gems are really plentiful, so there's absolutely no reason to buy. But yes, Adam, what were you getting at? There's this other game on your show notes list. Uh, it sounds really interesting. What is adulting simulator? I have never played this. Um, it's like a super something. expensive game. Um, oh. I'm not sure you guys okay. just openly just want is to it, decide to go buy it. Is it pay to win? Uh, yes. Yeah. It's pay to win, but you pay a lot now and you win like 30 years later. Oh, oh that sounds like a ter- that's that sounds a, really that's a big grimy. commitment. Dude, yeah, I don't it's, want to it's a, like that. Fuck this it's game. A really, it's a lifestyle type of game. You know, I always talk about lifestyle games, how like Rocket League's a lifestyle of a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adult Simulator is now a lifestyle game for me. Okay. Fuck that. So like today, I was playing Adult Simulator for like eight hours. And it was a really fun one because you take a truck, you take stuff out of one house, you put it into a truck, mm-hmm. and you move it into another house. Oh. And then you drive back to first house and do it again. Oh, like and then moving. you go so, to eat I'm, lunch, like moving. and you realize you left the lunch in the car overnight, so it's bad. Oh, so I'm I'm looking I'm looking at screenshots here, and the <laughs> graphics are fucking impressive. Yeah, it looks like, exactly like real life. Holy shit! Yeah, I've never seen a game this beautiful before. But it looks pay to win. It looks like they nerfed certain classes. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's <laughs> there's no magic. Classes. The physics engine is fundamentally broken. Um. Uh, yeah, I, I don't yeah, I mean, know how I feel about this. It's weird. The physics engine's so weird because most of the time in these games, you see how they adjust them to how they need. Like gravity is nine point eight one meters per second squared, and that's it. I mean, there's no adjustment yeah. done when you throw up. It's pulling down negative nine point eight one. When you drop something, it's nine point eight. It's like what the fuck? Do something <laughs> for me here, you <laughs> physics. Yeah, or I mean, at the very least, like, can you get? power ups or like like haste or something to speed up this process because it sounds like especially the the moving mission grind it sounds really slow and arduous and just annoying well so there's some good news um it has a really good soundtrack um it's um got a plug-in for google play so you get some really good music during while you're playing oh yeah um made by other players yes yeah, um, oh, so it's like all player driven content. So if you have yeah. a shitty quest, it's on another player because they built it, right? Yeah. Yes. And then okay. you okay. just don't accept their quest. You go find another quest across the country <laughs> and you redeem that quest instead. All right. Which okay. is what I did earlier this all year right. in Adult Simulator. So 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 you're moving. Yes, I we uh <laughs> purchased a house. Uh we got the keys on Friday. Nice. And uh today I was moving stuff. That's I hate moving. That's uh that's a big pain. But it's I worth don't it, mind obviously. It. But I've done it every year. The only thing that sucks is I'm used to having an army of people. Yeah. And now <laughs> I have an army of Tom. <laughs> Until everybody that's else all, moves that's out all there. The army you need. And that said, that's there's not gonna be too many things I need help with. So it's gonna be an awesome army and we're gonna have a new office, which means new studio which means podcast will look a little different and hopefully Comcast doesn't fuck me like they have been. But let's be fair. We are guaranteed to be fucked by Comcast. Yes. You don't even have to be subscribed to their service. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's been all of my week. Um, all week I was running around 
form, yeah. signing, wiring, losing lots of money, going into debt more than I've ever believed possible in my life. So <laughs> nice. So that's yeah. why you haven't that, played very many sounds... video games. Just important <laughs> life stuff. Yeah. That happens. yeah. Congratulations on the house, though. Happy for you. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'll be happy once we're in. <laughs> and Adam, for yeah. you. Yeah. I see you have finally been able to play something. Yes. Fortnite Battle Royale. Because I bought the new router. Now I can play it magically. It's wonderful. It's actually a lot of fun. Now I played a bunch yesterday. Um, Are you going full solo? No. Played with others. Nice. Uh, I did some solo matches too, though. I, did, I just I did a variety of basically all the modes. Um, a lot of fun. I'm not good at building stuff yet. It's uh, the controls are really intuitive. Um, I think the top level players will like switch their keybinds a little bit because to choose which kind of structure or which piece you want to build, it's the F keys, F one, two, three. It's kind of out of the way. So, oh yeah, yeah. I I don't like the default keys. Yeah, I haven't changed them yet, but I do not like them. Right. So I'll be changing those. So hopefully that that makes it a little smoother for me. But uh, having a lot of fun with it. Had some uh, pretty cool moments. Haven't gotten that far. I think the best we did was top fifteen. I think it was a duos match. Or that maybe bad. it was top seventeen. We were we were number seventeen and sixteen. Are um, they a hundred people per yeah. thing too? Yeah. 100 people right. per thing. Smaller map than uh, player unknowns battlegrounds. So they, the matches move quicker. Um, yeah, it's just another good flavor on the, the battle royale thing. I'm not going to stop playing battlegrounds altogether. I mean, I'll play both of them. They both have their own merits. But uh, Fortnite's really cool. I'm glad that's free too. Yeah, I still need to pick that up and try it. Um I'm a little weirded by the fact that I won't understand the building mechanic, and that is the benefit of having Fortnite proper, as you're familiar with that. But mm -hmm. it, it's it's so intuitive; it's just getting used to it. I just haven't done it very much in the matches. Like, a, it's it's more valuable, I think, at the end game of the match. Um, um, yeah, yes I, and no. I, so I I use it a lot to get up places so up on top of mountains or to the second floor of a house which usually has hidden treasure chests in the attic mm -hmm. so i will use it to like build stairs and jump in that way um it's also really nice if you've got a shotgun um you can build stairs like when you're attacking someone build stairs to give yourself temporary cover run up two rounds of stairs jump off and now you can shotgun them or shotgun them from above nice advanced yeah. tactics I didn't do any yeah. of that, but um, that's cool. I want to try that. Uh, Eric, definitely download this. This would be a game that we could all play, and it, it would be fun. It would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I've been meaning to. I just haven't been <laughs> getting to it. Yeah. Which is fair. such a lazy-ass excuse to say I've been meaning to do it, I just haven't, when it's on the computer, and it's free, and it takes five seconds to start downloading. <laughs> so I understand how much of an ass I am for making that comment, but mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, still. Sometimes you just don't get around to stuff. I know that feeling. Uh, anything else, though? Or you just been kind of grinding that out now that you get a chance to? I uh, played that a good bit yesterday. Played, uh, once again, a, a good bit of Overwatch today. Really liking that, considering buying it. Uh, Zenyatta's my man. That's my hero. Yeah. I switched between him and um, Reaper. I did really well with Reaper the one match. You did great with Reaper that match. And um, what was the other? I, I kept switching between three, I think, m mostly. Yeah, you... Uh, Farrah. Uh, did you play Junkrat? No, I never did play Junkrat. Okay. Um, I played Reinhardt. I didn't like Reinhardt that much. Um, I played Farah. I do like Farah a lot. Or Farah, Farah, however you... However you say it. I think I think it's Farah. I say it Farah. I'm probably wrong. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Overwatch She's is fun. great. Yeah. I'm I, probably, don't, I, I might I don't end up buying any it. Other... Um it gets more fun once you start learning the more things. And then I played some Rocket League. And I've been so when I first started playing, we all played the Merc because it was funny. And then once I started really yes. playing, I've always been more of the flat cars. There are flat cars and tall cars in this game. We've talked about this a lot. 
always been a flat car guy. Always basically just switched between the Breakout and the Dominus. Uh, went through a big Dominus phase. And then went through a big Octane phase. And then like the past month or so, I've just been switching. Every time I play, I'll play. I, like I can't. Most people stick with a car. And then every once in a while, they'll play another car. But they stick with one car. Yeah. And lately, I've been just like. I can't pick one to stick with. I keep switching it so like every couple of times. Was playing with you. Yeah, and that's the point. I was gonna. I was getting to that. I I oh, never sorry. really got much into the Batmobile. I played it a little bit when it came out, and then I played a little bit of some of the other cars that are the same hitboxes. Batmobile. There's Mantis. I didn't really care for it, but I actually played Batmobile proper, and I was doing great with it. It felt awesome. It's so much fun to play. And when you score a goal now, they have it. It has its own goal explosion now that it didn't used to have. Shows, I saw that. Terrible. Yes, it shows the bat. It's not terrible. And then it makes a big, loud, symphonic, oh. deep brass, Hans Zimmer, <laughs> theatrical. <Whoa>. Oh. <laughs> it's awesome. It's so good. Well, how can you not like that? It's terrible. It's like the there's actually a website for what is it? Inception, the movie. There's a website that's just the button, and you press it, and it does that thing from the movie trailer. It's awesome. But yeah, I've been playing Batmobile a lot, and it's been super fun. Nice. I like the flat cars. It just mm -hmm. I hate when the Batmobile first came out. Its boost was obnoxious, yeah, and then now it has this. It's it went just, squee. I've been turned off of it. <laughs> yeah, but, that's that's uh, that's all I've been playing. But. You said Rocket League. I did. And say we do Rocket have a League. little bit of news about Rocket we League. We do. The RLCS, um, RLCS season week. four. Yeah. Um, we had some people in the Discord watching. It was a good time. Uh, we saw some sick plays. Uh, an amazing ceiling shot. But um, Gale Force just fucking rocked it. Yeah. That they are a very solid team. I uh, watched their G2 game early in the tournament and just how much they just controlled that. I was like, oh, this is not going to be good. Mm -hmm. And then in the finals, they just swept Method. Yeah. 4 0. Yeah. Most uh, every other season of RLCS has had this really crazy, like, super close finals. The, the first RLCS. Um, it, it went to a game seven, I'm pretty sure, in overtime. Uh, the second RLCS, you had Flipside went through the loser's bracket and then beat uh, Northern Gaming, I believe it was. Two whole series, best of seven. And that I'm pretty sure that went to overtime. Um, and then this one was just... I'm, I think I skipped one. Who won last? It was oh, Northern, Anthony, yeah, yeah, Northern last, last season. One. But yeah, it was just a complete domination. Because mm. yeah, the last one was also a reset, but this one, Gale Force, like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's notable, uh, Turbo Pulse. Or, uh, yeah, but he um, is now two-time champion, back-to-back. -back. Yes. So he could two say time. that he is two-time, 2017 rlcs champion which is really weird to think that you can have that twice in one year but you can actually have it more than that mm -hmm. turbo Pulso. but yes he uh he, he got the mvp so it was, yep. it was a good time and they won their fifty-five thousand dollars for the day price well, goal for the whole season was three hundred and fifty thousand. And then just for the live finals, the one day, the prize will for that day was 150 of that. So first so place. This, go ahead. This works like um, most other esports and where uh, these guys aren't paid a salary or anything. It's just the price pool, right? Uh, I don't know the details of the how they organize that stuff, but they are represented okay. by organizations, gaming organizations. Yeah. Right. Like this yes. year, it was a big thing for me anyway. Cloud nine yep. was actually yep. a competitive team this year. Yep. Yeah. So the standings, the results, uh, first place, $55,000 Gale force esports. That's an organization I'm not familiar with. I don't know how big they are. 
I don't know how much they're paying the players. None of that stuff. Uh, second place, $30,000 method. Uh, third place, $16,000 cloud nine and fourth place, $11,000 G2 esports. I like yeah, the distribution. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Um, my, my only concern is that, and granted, not everything is Dota, right? I don't want to see <laughs> a $26 million prize pool, or I, right. I do want to see it, right? But I'm not yeah. expecting to see it. Um, but I would, I would hope for, uh, you know, a championship series like this to have, you know, maybe a million dollars as the, the total, um, the, the total championship prize pool. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause it seems, um, it seems low to me. It, it seems really low. But you have to remember Dota's is by crowdfunding and stuff where Rocket League brings some money in. They don't bring enough money in to have a million dollar tournament two, three years, a, or two times, two, three times a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This no, is, to this is totally more agree. frequent than okay. um, the international. So it's probably, yeah. it's probably what, about a million dollars total over a year? I would say probably getting close to, probably not okay. quite that. Uh, yeah. A I, I would probably like about 800,000 a year. Because you're you're right. The magic in the Dota prize pool is the compendium. Is people saying yes? I will chip in X amount of dollars to throw out a prize pool. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see a Rocket League compendium. I would love to see people throwing money, um, you know, to get some cool cosmetic items uh, and them, you know, directly sponsoring this tournament. Mm -hmm. um, I think that does a whole lot to. Uh, to build hype, get people involved mm -hmm. uh, in the community, you know, that isn't just watching it. Um, now, and there, uh, there is a portion of all key sales, the keys to open the crates. Um, a portion of that goes directly to the esports programs, too. Okay. It's just the thing is, Dota has so many more things that are customizable mm -hmm. that they can yeah. make the compendium more incentive. But with Rocket League, yeah, there's a good bit of customization, but it's not even close to the amount of stuff you can do with Dota. That's true. That's very true. Until they start letting you customize your goals and your half of the court and stuff like that. <laughs> Which announcer would be really, packs. really fucking weird. Rocket League announcer yeah. packs. That would be fun. That would, that be, would be really be fun. fun. I still love the Rick and Morty uh, announcer pack for Dota. I really just want the, the Spanish RLCS broadcast announcer pack. Did you see? Did you guys see any of that? <laughs> I did not. The last RLCS, they had a, there was a Spanish broadcast of it, and the casters were just going crazy. And I don't, really? I don't speak Spanish at all, but listening to this in Spanish was one of the best things I've ever heard in my life. But somebody's, they're just like getting all hyped up and yelling, blah, 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 and then they get to, he hits the goal and he goes, goal, goal. <laughs> they're just yelling and screaming at the top i don't know how they didn't blow their voices out doing that it was insane but look up clips of that because it is so funny it's it's speaking amazing. of clips someone should take that and uh have adam make it his ringtone for the next week <laughs> yes um, but yeah, so RLCS that happened. It was a good time. Um, next RLCS, once again, come join us. We tend to have like a little watch party on our Discord. We have a good time with it. Um, yeah, I really like this watch party thing we're doing. Um, yeah, and I, we are definitely going to keep this up. We're going to do it for other big gaming events, whether it's Counter Strike, which I know most people here don't watch Counter Strike tournaments, but still definitely big Dota tournaments, the international in particular. We will have a uh, the Discord open to a watch party. I mm -hmm. probably won't be there because I'm planning on being there yeah. at the International this year. It's like sitting on yeah. the couch with your buds watching a football game on Sunday or whatever, yeah. except we're from all over the place. And, you know, you just hang out there. It does make it more fun. Like, I would never watch a Counter-Strike tournament. But if everybody was chilling in there watching a Counter-Strike live finals, you know, whatever, I might jump in. Might even watch yeah. it a little bit. Totally. But... Let's get to some um, sad news. Uh, GameSpot. Game Whenever stop. they were finally doing... GameStop. <laughs> GameStop. Did I say spot? Are yeah. you dyslexic? Oh, Are sorry. You there? Sorry. Just a little Game bit. Stop. GameStop. Um, I, I, I mixed up some letters. Um, they put a pause to their um, unlimited uh, gameplay title or gameplay program. 
which mm. is sad yeah. because that was actually something really good that they were that was setting their up. saving grace yeah um they have paused it there's no say on what they're planning on doing in the future um they are at least doing one thing to make this right um they're asking people to bring back the game uh they will refund them 100 percent, and then they get to take a pre-owned game so hmm. they're at any least giving them game any for used game for free that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I imagine that uh, they probably ran into issues with. I, I think you're right. I think they ran into issues with uh, with stock and inventory. Um, <laughs> but you know, wh whatever they're trying, um, I think this will be good eventually. Uh, also, when you are doing something that's fundamentally shitty, like shutting down a program people pay for, them doing this, saying "Hey, 100% refund, and you get a free game," like that's that's cool as hell, right? And the only thing I would expect would be a 100% refund, but mm -hmm. getting a free game on top of this, like that's that's really nice. And it's it's weird. I hate GameStop. Yeah, I and I was that GameStop was what I was going to say and coming from a company that is known to be yeah. kind of shady. Oh, yeah. you're selling your entire childhood to us? Mm, $6 sounds about right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's I, really weird. The last two news things we've had with them have been positive for them. While this is still sad and sucks the program's getting stopped, it's still, holy yeah. shit, they're doing right by the customer. What mm -hmm. the yeah. fuck? This yeah. sounds like, it really, it sounds like a good deal for anyone who signed up to the to do this in the first place. And mm -hmm. let's be honest, they don't have to do any of this shit, right? To avoid an upheaval, all they have to do is refund people and say, sorry, we're shutting this down for now while we work out the kinks. But instead, they said, hey, we're shutting this down we know this sucks. We know you were excited. Take a game. It's on us. That's really fucking cool. I think they've realized their terrible PR, especially I think they got a lot of bad rap. A, their pre-order shit they've always had. But like with the classics, yeah. when there's no stock, they have one, but you have to buy it in a bundle for 150 bucks with all this Funko bullshit. <laughs> yep. So I think they've realized they've built up a lot of bad will mm -hmm. and they're trying to correct that to get people like, hey, come in here we have a lot of different shit mm -hmm. don't hate us anymore we're sorry <laughs> yeah that's that's really nice um i i do like that they they're making this right yeah it's like you said it's more than i expected out of them yeah um, uh in other get into a weird company news? that's not doing it right let's talk about the last <laughs> thing not terrible well actually this could be terrible tom talk about it yeah okay so this is, this is just a report it is not official by any any stretch of the imagination nintendo is refusing to comment but reportedly nintendo is making a mario movie with the same studio that did the minion movie um <laughs> huh yeah so did you guys ever see the super mario brothers movie uh oh actually my God, no. yes i don't think so really Oh, I think it's on Netflix. You should totally watch it because it is the greatest movie ever made. I promise. Just go watch it. <laughs> I believe Please you. Please keep it completely. Why you say I that. completely <laughs> believe you. I am naive. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised that Nintendo is going to do anything with making movie, uh, movies of their properties because the last time they tried it, it was absolute dog shit. Mm -hmm. um, it. So the Super Mario Brothers movie was so bad that Nintendo swore off doing any kind of movies for any of their properties ever again. <laughs> now I and actually now it looks really like they... want to watch the old one. <laughs> oh my god, you have to. It is so, so bad. It is one of the worst movies ever made. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to pull up the Rotten Tomatoes score here real quick. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to say that Mario is probably one of the worst things they could do for a movie. I mean, if you want something with action... Yeah. Go um, yeah. Metroid. What kind if you of? You want something hmm. with a driving story? Go Zelda. What, I mean, what you kind can of make, movie yeah, are we going to make? A story. What kind of game so, should we base a movie off of? Oh yeah, a platformer. That translates. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. A platformer yeah, I, without I any depth of story, really. I don't understand what they were thinking, um, because they did have other franchises to base shit off of. Uh, but the the tomato meter for the Super Mario Brothers movie is 15 percent it is so so bad that's rough. um and if 
there was a uh, like a mini documentary on what it took to make this movie. Mm-hmm. Apparently, like the directors and actors fucking hated each other. Uh, people were drunk on the set constantly. Um, there were injuries, and this movie ran so far over budget that there was no way in hell it could ever make it up. Like it was just a trash fire all around. So Nintendo might try this again, but in an animated form. I don't really have a lot of faith, but, uh, you know, they can't do any worse than the Wii U. So um, I do want to call out, they've done Mario in an animated form before. They have done that in a TV series. The Super Mario, I can't remember the exact name of it, but Mario and Luigi were in human form, and then they would cut away to cartoon segments. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that from being, when you were a kid, but that's mm-hmm. happened already. Wonderful. I realized I was muted. Yes, I used to watch that as a kid, and it was absolutely terrible. It was awful. And it had, uh, oh, shoot, I forget the guy's name. It had, like, some semi-famous C-lister on there. Um, yeah. Uh, but the, the movie, absolutely go watch it if you haven't already. Get some popcorn and Mystery Science Theater the fuck out of it, because that's the only way you can watch it. Well, okay. Yeah. Shall well, we get down to it? So, yeah. Yeah. Let's just let's, let's just do that. Let's, hey, Tom. One, one motion. <laughs> rip the bandaid off. Tom, who's oh, your least favorite company? I got it. I got to Get ready for this. Hang on. All right. <laughs> EA sucks. Okay. There it is. There it is. Okay. Yeah, that's my All closing right. argument, that's Your Honor. Yeah. So I don't want to spend too much time about this. If you're on Twitch or at YouTube watching us right now, you probably have a good idea what the fuck bullshit EA has been pulling with Battlefront 2. Yes. So I don't think we need to go too deep on the high levels. We know they fucked up the credit system. They were doing a terrible pay to win and they recently removed it. Just in case, just in case, uh, 72 pin connector is your only source of gaming news <laughs> god help you um i'm gonna give a quick overview and i'm gonna emphasize quick all right so ea released a beta for star wars battlefront 2 the first one was not well received because it was kind of a cash grab and wasn't really a full game the second one the beta was a lot of fun but it had this weird progression system with uh crates and unlocking star cards and microtransactions and basically it seemed really pay to win um so people people complained a lot and ea said oh we heard you loud and clear we're gonna fix it uh and then then they didn't uh people who pre-ordered the game could play it early and the progression system would take roughly four thousand hours to grind out all the content um yeah that's kind of a long time uh or or you could pay you know a thousand dollars or whatever to unlock all the content and even then it wasn't a guarantee that you'd get everything mm-hmm. um and the um the content that you unlock in the the crates that you would pay for would make you better in the game versus other players so that's it was pay to point. win that's the very key if point. you if you pre-ordered the game you unlocked elite level star cards from the start so people who pre-order the game are currently destroying the people who didn't pre-order the game it is a pay-to-win system and you had to pre-order the expensive bundle uh instead of the cheap one to get the elite star cards um so when you, then, when you do that you still can't play as darth vader yes so <laughs> so then then after all this ea said hey we're gonna just lower the the cost of all this so it's not so much of a grind to unlock these loot crates uh but then while they did that they also lowered the amount of credits you got per each match um so it it wasn't like the big dip everyone thought it was it was about halfway corrected Mm -hmm. uh and then there was such an upheaval and a rumor that disney themselves got in because they now own the star wars license they said look you are tarnishing the fuck out of the image of this brand go fuck yourself and turn this off so right now ea has and i want to emphasize this temporarily turned off the progression system um no, to turn off the payments of it. Yes, yes. Turn off the, the payment the of the progression system. Temporarily. Yeah. So you still have to do the loot boxes. You still have to do the crazy long grind. You just can't pay to jump ahead. Yet. Yeah. 
yet. Which is this is temporary. Fine. They will turn it back on. The game just came out yesterday. I expect within a couple of weeks it'll be back. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, luckily, this has done some good things. Let's get the the good stuff out of the way because there's a lot of bad stuff. The good things <laughs> are. Um, Game reviewers uh, and gaming journalists are now going to start including progression systems, loot boxes, all that shit as core pieces of their reviews. Uh, so you've got people like Polygon, you've got people like Kotaku saying, hey, look, we're going to start taking these, this loot box thing seriously because it can utterly ruin a game. Mm. Um, I forget who it was. Was it uh, IGN who said, look, this would have been a 9 out of 10 game, but because of the progression system, we're giving it a 6 out of 10. It's a great game underneath the surface. It's a lot of fun. But because it's pay to win, because it's so grindy, because it is an absolute shit fest for this one anti feature EA decided to throw in, it's a terrible game. It's an absolute trash fire of a game because of this one thing. And I do want to stress that real quick. This game, the game is really play, good. The gameplay game. is really fun. The gameplay is really fun. So, I mean, they really screwed the pooch because they had a great game. They yeah. should, if they would have done the Overwatch Dota thing and say, you know what? This is Star Wars. You know how many awesome customizations you can have that are meaningless? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's sell cosmetic. you different fucking clones. Nothing is wrong with shit. selling cosmetic uh, yes, options. Yes, I'm totally and fine with that. they would have made a bank. They would have made fucking bank doing that. Yes, yeah. yes, because I would have played as one of the like flute players in Mos Eisley. <laughs> I wouldn't have played as those guys because it would be fucking weird to get shot by that weird big-headed freak. I, I totally want that. I might have paid for it even. Um, but the way it works now... Unless you had pre-ordered the expensive version of the game, you get into a match and you lose, and then you get a pittance of credits that you have to grind a thousand hours to unlock all the content. This is not an eSport. This is not a lifestyle game. This is a point-in-time shooter that will be dead in two years. A thousand hours is unrealistic to ask of someone. A hundred hours is probably about right. Maybe two if your game is really fucking good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this isn't the kind of game like like you said. It's not a lifestyle game. It's not gonna be like Halo or COD, where people come home, they sit down, they play this until the next even one COD, comes out. E yeah, yeah, even COD lasts a year until the next COD comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, that's until it comes out. But if there yeah. wasn't, COD would still last. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I completely agree with. You. Yeah, it's just. So, yeah. This this is this is nuts. Um, even. This got so big that even Standard News was looking at this saying, holy shit, uh, gamers are mad, but gamers are always mad, but this is a fucking <laughs> trash fire. Yeah. Um, all the reviews that have come out about this game say the same thing. The core game is fun. It is a good, well-made game. It looks great. It feels great. It sounds great. But because of this grind, because of pay to win, because of the loot boxes... It's an absolute unplayable nightmare of a pay-to-win system. It is just the worst. And let's keep in mind, this is a pay-to-win game that's not free. This is a pay-to-win game that you paid $60 at least mm -hmm. for. This and is a terrible trend in the industry, and we are going to see a massive backlash. And since you can even pay in those crates, you have no fucking clue what you're getting. Yeah. This is re up the debate about gambling to the point where now Be uh, Belgium and the Netherlands are both investigating to see if this is actually considered gambling. So, so you actually have countries now debating whether these systems should be classified as gambling, which would then drastically change the way games are able to do this. Hmm. Yeah. So. I'm going to drop some science. There's this guy named Skinner came up with this thing called the Skinner box. It's an experiment and there are rats. And when they push a lever, they get a treat. And he realized that you can condition people or, or rats in this case, or people not that different uh, to do something repeatedly, to do an action repeatedly to get rewards. He also discovered that if you give randomized rewards, not necessarily the, the thing that the rats wanted, but you give random shit that they are surprised by, um, that they will pull the lever more and more and more. Uh, this is a Skinner box. Free-to-play games do this. It's a psychological hack on people. Um, loot boxes and randomized treasure get people excited. They get people playing more. They get people paying more to mm -hmm. get randomized rewards of stuff that they may or may not want. Um, 
this is literally just taking human psychology and exploiting it. Uh, it is it is a well known phenomenon. It is scientifically proven. It's not you know just some crazy experiment by game companies. They literally looked at the psychology of this method and decided to exploit it for profit. Now, if your game is free, I get it. I understand you need to monetize in some way. But when I'm paying sixty dollars for a game, you don't need to fuck me over like this. Yeah, it's it's EA doing what EA does, and what really worries me about this is they do have a lifestyle type game coming out next year. They have Anthem. And I was really looking forward to that because they've got really good story writers. What they've shown so far looks really fucking good. I was 100% willing to back that. Yeah. Really worried now on a lifestyle game like that. If they'll be <laughs> charging for DLC and guns and yeah. armor and all this kind of shit and not the cosmetics type. And uh, EA shit. We've all known this, it. But yeah. this is getting to new levels. It's getting worse than it's ever been. Yeah. This this just goes to show, and, and hopefully this is a wake-up call to other game developers, um, your monetization model can and will sink your game in, in one of two ways, right? Either you monetize incorrectly and nobody buys anything and you don't make any goddamn money and you die, uh, or you over-monetize incorrectly and everyone fucking hates you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get this right. It's it's a core piece of game design now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're making a free to play game, you can't expect to just magically get money. You have to monetize. But if you're getting a sixty dollar game, you know, and you want some extra cash because you're a little greedy, you can throw in micros. Um, this is only going to get worse. Rockstar said forty percent of their income comes from in game microtransactions. That's a fucking shame. It's mm -hmm. an absolute fucking shame. Uh, the only thing gamers can do to fight back against this is to stop buying the shit. It's How really is it a easy. shame to have 40% of your sales be from micros when you haven't released a new game in five years? No, I totally get that. I totally get it. But it's it's shitty for the gamers if I buy a $60 game and they want me to pay a couple hundred bucks in loot box. That is shitty. Yes, that's, that's not what GTA was, though. But... Yeah. That is not at all what Rockstar was. So don't bring them up and try to put them as that's what they were doing. I, that I, all happened after the, the game's PV, life. Mm -hmm. The PvP in, in Grand Theft Auto Online has always been pay to win. That's great. That's fine. That's not why you buy GTA. Correct. I, I bought GTA for the single player game. I thought I would like GTA Online until I realized it's literally just a whale fest of free to play assholes <laughs> buying shit. <laughs> See, everything I've seen about on... I'm not used to seeing people play PvP on that. That's all I can say about that. But yeah, either way, I think that's enough of the shade. We all know they're shady sons of bitches. <laughs> but with that, I think it's time to uh, do the rundown and get on out of here. So for all of you lovely people watching on Twitch right now, you should uh, venture over to our YouTube at some point at 72 Pin Connector and check out some of the content we have up there. And if you're already there and you're watching this, make sure you come onto our Twitch um, every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll watch us live, get in the chat, be part of the conversation with us. If you think that we rant, rave, talk about stupid shit, or are completely missing the park on most of these topics, you can always tweet at us at, at 72 pc podcast. Let us know what you think. And if you're a barbarian and need some RSS feeds for your iTunes or not iTunes, but podcasts. God damn, I'm stupid. Go to 72pinconnector.com, get all those RSSS feeds. RSSSSS feeds. RSSSS feeds. SSSSS feeds. But most of you, just go to iTunes, Google Play, Stitch, or whatever app you use. We're register with them. Go pick up our feeds. Um, and with that, I think it's all we got for you guys this week. Join us on Battle Right. Yes, Battle Right. Immediately following. Download it. Have fun with us. And other than that, till next week, game on. See you, everyone. See you.